Hello guys, in this video we are going to learn about dynamic programming through knapsack problem. Here is the outline of my talk. Let us begin with some introduction to knapsack problem. Let us say you are planning on a trip and you are about to pack your items in a knapsack or a backpack. The items that you are going to pack going to consume some space in the bag. In addition to that, these items have some worth on, or significance. The objective of the knapsack problem is given a knapsack of limited space and given set of items to pack, you are trying to pack the items such that the overall significance of all the items that you pack is maximized. Now this knapsack problem can be written as a linear integer model. Here is the standard description of knapsack model. It's a maximization of a linear function subjected to a single linear constraint. In addition to that, the variables y1, y2, y3, y4, they come from integers. Sometimes you also have these variables coming from binary domain. Here w1, w2, w3, w4 represent the worth or significance of these items. Whereas s1, s2, s3, s4 represent the amount of space each unit of item will take and capital S represent the total available space. y1, y2, y3, y4 the variables of this problem they represent number of units of item 1 item 2, item 3 and item 4 respectively. For example, y1 equals to 1 implies 2 units of item 1. Now let us try to identify the dynamic programming elements for the knapsack problem. As we have seen in our first video, the stages for the knapsack problem will be items to pack. The state will be remaining space in the knapsack. The states will be remaining space in the knapsack. And the decision will be how many units to pack. Now let us see how we can update the integer model to fit the dynamic programming elements. All we have to do is to add a slack variable that represents the remaining capacity. And using this variable you can define the following stages where each stage corresponds to an item being filled and the last one corresponds to none of the items being filled. And the states correspond to the remaining capacity at each stage. Let us take an instance of knapsack problem to understand those DP elements. Here is a scenario. You have a 4 ton vessel that can be loaded with 3 items. Item 1 has 2 ton of weight. Item 2 has 3 ton of weight and item 3 has 1 ton of weight. In addition to that, the revenue per ton of item 1 is 31, 47 for item 2 and 14 for item 3. The objective is to determine the number of units for each item that will maximize the total revenue. Here we are going to assume that no fractional items will be packed. So what is a knapsack in this scenario? Well, knapsack is a generic term. For every scenario, the realization of the knapsack will be different. In this scenario, the knapsack is nothing but the vessel itself or the ship. And the items are nothing but such big containers. Let us try to graphically represent the given information. You are trying to maximize 31y1, 47y2 and 14y3. Where y1, y2, y3 represents the number of units of item 1, number of units of item 2, number of units of item 3. And then you have the constraint on weight. That is the total weight should be less than or equal to 4 tons. Now if you place 1 unit of item 1 it will consume 2 tons. If you place 1 unit of item 2 it will consume 3 tons. If you place 1 unit of item 3 it will consume 1 ton. R represents the remaining available tons in the vessel. And since fractional units are not allowed y1, y2, y3, they all comes from integers. Now as we have discussed earlier, the stages correspond to the item. 
and the last stage in the backward recursion corresponds to none of the items being filled. For each of these stages, here are the states. Now graphical representation is useful to identify infeasible movement. For example, let us look at the stage 1 problem. You can move from any of these states to state 0. What is the meaning here? I could have 0 remaining capacity in the ship. And then when I'm filling item 3, I will fill 0 units of item 3 and the remaining capacity in the ship will be 0. Or I could have 1 ton capacity remaining in the ship. I will fill 1 unit of item 3 and the remaining capacity will be 0. Or I could have 2 ton remaining capacity in the ship. I am going to fill 2 units of item 3 and then the remaining capacity will be 0. Similarly, you can have all these possible movements. Now sometimes you might have some infeasible movements. For example, let us say right now you have 3 tons of remaining capacity in the ship and you are filling item number 2. If I fill 1 unit of item number 2, it will consume 3 tons and then the remaining capacity in the ship will be 0. Now if I fill none of the units for item 2, then the remaining capacity will stay the same. However, there is no feasible move that will take me from 3 units of remaining capacity to 1 unit of remaining capacity. And the reason is I cannot have fractional values for these variables. Now identifying these infeasible moves will help you to shorten the tables and reduce the number of computations. Now let us start the backward recursion method to solve the knapsack problem using these tables. We are going to start with stage 1 problem and as you know in backward recursion stage 1 problem will start from stage 1 and ends at stage 0. Stage 1 corresponds to item 3 being filled and stage 0 corresponds to no more items to be filled. The possible start states could be 0, 1 up to 4 and the possible end states could be 0, 1, 2, 3 up to 4. Now based on our graphical representation, you can see that if the starting remaining capacity is 2 tons, then there is no way by adding an item, I am going to increase the remaining capacity. Therefore, all these blocks or the upper triangular part of this table will be infeasible. So you don't have to do any calculations for the upper triangle. Now let us see some of the feasible moves. If I move from state 1 to state 0, it means I have added 1 unit of item 3 to the vessel. And if I move from state 1 to state 1, it means I have added 0 units of item 3 to the vessel. And based on the number of units of item 3 I am going to add, I will have the revenue. And here are all the calculations. For example, let us see how we got this number. At the start, we have 3 tons of remaining capacity. And then we added 2 units of item 3. That generates a revenue of 28. And the corresponding end state will be 1 ton of remaining capacity. Now for each row, we do the same exercise like we did in the previous examples. We try to find the optimal objective function value. Here the optimal objective function value is max. The reason is the objective function type is maximization or the goal is to maximize the total worth. So at each row we are going to pick the max value and then we are going to write down the best end state. Now in this problem we have a different state variable and different decision variable. The state variables are represented by x and the decision variables are represented by y. So I am also going to record the corresponding decision variable. For example in this row the best decision was to place 2 units of item 3 or you can say the value of variable y3 is equal to 2. Similarly, you fill all the values in this column. Now this is a summary of stage 1. Now let us move to stage 2. Stage 2 problem is going to start from stage 2 and ends at stage 1 in backward recursion. Stage 2 corresponds to item 2 being filled and stage 1 corresponds to item 3 or the last item to be filled. Now, possible start states could be 0, 1, 2, up to 4 and possible end states could be the same. 
when I move between any two states, I have two terms to look at in the objective function. The first term will be the decision corresponding to the current stage problem and the second term will be the objective function value from the previous stage. For example, consider that I am moving from state 3 to state 0. Now for this move, the current decision cost is to have one unit of item 2 and the past decision cost will be the value from this table. So it will be 47 from this stage and 0 from the previous stage. Similarly, you can fill all these numbers. Like we have seen in the graphical representation, some of the moves are infeasible and for that you don't need any calculation. You can leave the boxes empty or cross it out. For a given row, you look at the maximum and that corresponds to the optimal objective function value and then you also note down the best end state and the corresponding decision variable value. Since this stage corresponds to item 2 being filled, the decision variable will be y2. Similarly, we can solve the stage 3 problem. Stage 3 problem starts from stage 3 and ends at stage 2. Stage 3 corresponds to item 1 being filled and here are all the calculations and here is the summary of stage 3. Now given the summary of stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3, we can trace the optimal path. The optimal path will be starting from 4 going to 0 and then going from 0 to 0 and 0 to 0. Therefore the optimal path is 4 0 0 0 and the optimal solution is y1 equals to 2, y2 equals to 0 and y3 equals 0. In this table, I am writing the optimal solution, the values of y1, y2, y3, and then the corresponding weight. Two units of y1 will consume four tons of weight, and then you have here zero ton and zero ton, and you can see the space or the weight restriction is satisfied. And then we calculate the corresponding revenue. One unit of item one will have a revenue of 31 units. Therefore, two units will have 62, and then that's the total revenue you have. And that is the optimal solution for the knapsack problem. The total revenue is 62 units and the optimal solution is to pack 2 units of item 1. Now from this example we can see an interesting insight. Knapsack problem can be generalized as follows. You have a maximization of an objective function subjected to a single less than or equal to constraint. And then you have individual restrictions on some variables. Notice that the objective function need not be a linear function. It could also be product of y1, y2, yn. Similarly, the constraint need not be a linear constraint. It could be also a nonlinear constraint. Not only that, the problem could be maximization or minimization type of problem. In addition to that, you could also have different inequalities. So either the slack or the surplus could represent the states. That is all what I have for knapsack problem. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe to my channel.